we grind now, we ninny bong Transformers family. I am the 80s Transformer fan. You are watching George Reviews. And today on George Reviews, we'll be taking a look at Hasbro Studio Series 1986 Transformers, the movie Brett Gar. And it is about time we got a cartoon slash movie accurate Brett Gar from the... Red Guard, this is an official Hasbro product. I'm so excited for this figure. Here he is in his window box packaging. You can kind of see some of his accessories in the window box. You can see his axe. You can see the tire. I don't know if that counts as an accessory because he needs the tire to roll around in the vehicle. Um, some artwork for Red Guard on the box right here, running in a chop, a Decepticon, or maybe even an Autobot. One by the movie, it says. The package says Red Guard 8 Plus Hasbro right there. We got. Takara Tommy on the box, Generations, Transformers, bottom of the box, nothing. Top of the box, a window to allow light through Transformers, the movie. The side of the box, we have 1986 and Red Guard once again. Same thing on this side of the box, slightly different close-up, Studio Series 86. This is figure number nine in the series. I always forget to pay attention to that. He is a Voyager class figure. Back of the box, the product shot, big screen. Big screen inspired scale detail backdrop. And let's get this guy open and take a look. Sliding him out and we are going to dare to be stupid. Here is the backdrop Planet Junkion right there. And in the box, as usual, we have a set of instructions that will not be used. Because I'm hard-headed that way. And a warning label says warning right there. Don't choke on the figure. Don't swallow it. Don't eat it. Uh, I guess we take a look. Since this is already out, let's take a look at the backdrop. It looks like a junkie iron cruiser actually flying through the air. And nothing but debris and the planet itself. A little platform to stand your figure. And let's get Red Gar out of this half a clam. And here we are, and here he is out of the packaging. His two tires are packaged separately and apparently are still tied down, Miss O. There we go. And these things are hard plastic. I expected them to be a little bit rubbery, and they are not at all. Let's get Redgar up on the platform and see how he looks on the planet Junkion. Feels a little light. Just pick it up. Feels a little light. All right, let's take a look at our Redgar. First thing I notice, the first thing that pops out of the packaging is the fact that he's done in multiple different color plastics. And normally Hasbro will cheap out, slap paint over. I love it when the different colors are actually cast in plastic. And he looks great. We have a brown on the shoulders. And the um, crotch piece, the waist area. I have a beige right here. This is casted in plastic. We have a, a red right here. And uh, this, this pinkish plastic right here is casted here. And on the forearms and the head. And also back here for the motorcycle parts. And he has some casted like um, gray right here. Which is very cool. Um, it's very nice that they took the time to cast actually the different plastic. And not just slop it with paint. So where he does have paint apps, let's check that out. He has a paint app, a gray on top of his head. And then he has a different grayish beige down here. It's not so perfect right there where the part comes together. Um, and what I think is the seat in robot mode has like that pinkish plastic and right here on the side. So he has what three different colors and the red. This, this on his bicep is paint as well and in his forehead. And I guess they use the same paint for his eyes. It does have several paint apps and multiple different areas casted in plastic. Let's take a look at Rhett Gar's face. And this is the most animated looking Rhett Gar um, in G1 Transformer history, official Transformer history. He has the mustache, which is very nice. It's always been a subject of great debate and jokes amongst the robot community why they have mustaches. But it looks cool. The chin piece comes out and turns to the side. I wonder if it's articulate. It looks like a little space in there. See, that looks like a space, but I don't think it moves. It might. Nope. It looks cool. The little beard mustache. Um, his face is that beige-type plastic in there. 
His eyes are red as they should be. And um, some continuities, the Junkyards are half Autobot, half Decepticon. Oh, and he has some gold on the side of his head. I don't know if I pointed that out right there. Uh, but he really looks good. Looks cartoon accurate. And one thing I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of fun with, these little pieces right here articulate. I'm not going to call them that. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to use it. But they're like on a ball hinge, and they go all the way around whatever direction you want. And I'm assuming they're articulated for safety reasons, not just to have fun or be funny or weird with. So, yeah, um, th this is our figure. Um, let's check out the back. He has some hollowing like in the forearms right here in the back. And I'm assuming, I believe, and most likely, yep, that is transformation right there. Um, a little bit down here. And I see a little bit in the inner thigh, which a lot of that is to be expected. But this this is the only part that kind of looks like, yeesh. And that, that's the only like little problem I see with the figure. Not even a problem, but, you know, that's, that's going on with the figure. All right, let's have a go at Redgar's articulation. Redgar head goes for a 360 on his ball joint, and he can look up this far and down this far, which is nothing at all. And it to be on a ball joint, it has no real side-to-side -side rocker in there, which is kind of weird. We can get his arms up this far, which is nice. Which is not at the shoulder. He will 360 at that shoulder, and if you pull it out to the side, he will miss the handlebars on the motorcycle. He has a bicep swivel right there that swivels, and with these spikes jutting out, you got to kind of move the arm out so they don't hit the uh, motorcycle, and they're kind of hard. I think they'll be a little bit softer, but they're just as hard as plastic as the rest of them. And only thing about that, I'm not worried about safety. I'm worried about, like, breaking off or whatever gets stressed out when it falls and hits something. Anyway, completing that 360, elbow bend right here, coming to his wrist and his hand. He has spikes on the back of his knuckles. I didn't check that out. His hand, 360s. And you can hinge it down if you wanted to for the transformation. And his waist is giving while I'm doing the other articulation. We get a 360 out of that. He looks to have an ab crunch, but I think that's part of his transformation. Well, actually, he does crunch at the waist. And again, that may be part of his transformation. But what I was trying to point out, it looks like it crunches here, but it does not. But yeah, you can get it to do this if you want to. And the funny thing, it's supposed to clip in right here, but it doesn't snap or really hold. So it um, moves kind of easy right there. And I can get even more loose over time. Coming to his waist, we're going to move like, what are these, fuel tank saddlebags to the side. And Red Guard can do a full split and get down on your surface. And I'm pretty sure you can get the same from front to back because there is a ton of clearance under here up to the front and to the back. Plenty of clearance. And his upper thigh swivel. And there's a slight ratchet in there. You can see like the little teeth right there. And his thigh swivel completely comes around again. And again, these spikes kind of getting in the way, hanging up a little bit. And you can see the teeth for the ratchet for his knee. Even though that didn't ratchet, but you can still see the teeth. And you get his knee up this far. Coming to his foot, which is casted in two different plastics, which I'm very impressed. Um, front to back, a lot of it. I'm pretty sure that's transformation. Come forward a lot. And, and it rocks, actually. With some molded in detail in there. Which is cool. So you can pose Rec Gar in many a different poses. Alright, I would say let's break out Rec Gar accessories, but I... He only really has one. These are part of Red Guard, the tires. These things are hard. And it seems like if they fell from a high distance, they might crack and break. I would have thought they would have tried to put a softer, almost rubberish plastic on these. But they are very hard. It kind of bothers me a little bit. And again, we see multiple casted plastic, which is very cool. We got the gray, we have the green, and then we have the beige. Uh, three different plastics on this um, tire alone. So I think they are identical. I don't know. We'll figure it out. So you take one, and you can put it right here, and it doesn't, it doesn't lock on. Okay, wait. I, there is something. All right. There we go. Better, I have to push it into the, like the little cavity, and take this one. There we go. All right. I was not being firm enough, aggressive enough. So this completes the look of Red Guard. This is what he's supposed to look like. Maybe I should have went over articulation with all of this stuff, because now he is fully dressed. See how he holds that arm up with the tire on it, and that is no problem to hold it up with the tire on it. We can move the guy around, it's not falling over. You can feel the weight pulling him to that side with these tires over there, though. 
and his one weapon accessory. And this is supposed to be some type of axe or whatever. It looked like that thing we used to get at Kmart as a kid and you blow it. <sighs> a little windmill. <laughs> Let's get this in his hand. And you got to kind of push a little hard to get the little top piece down in there. And there he is with this little axe thing. He actually used it as an axe and he actually threw it at Springer in the movie. So I guess it's an axe and a boomerang. Has multiple functions. And just looks weird because he's a junkie on it. All right, let's go full transformation. Remove the tire. Man, now I stuck on there. The tires. This weapon. First thing I'm going to do, because I know we need to do it. Fold up his hands. Then I'll detach this backpack like this. Bring the chest forward. Here's the front of our motorcycle. And it kind of snaps out of there. And the glass pops up. Get that out of the way. The head unhinges. And uh, well, I think it goes up into the windshield. Like this. And this piece settles back into there. And it kind of locks. Okay, yeah. Like that. Then you bring these arms around this way rotating the front forearms like this little notch I think goes to the back like this or under the bottom spikes come out to the side I hope I had that in camera I just realized I was just way off on that all right then you take the wheel and I, I think the wheels are universal <laughs> maybe take the wheels and put them in his groove and we got that in then the there's a port right here and a pig right there you kind of lock you kind of lock that in on both sides and he's holding the tire and these things rotate back I don't know if they did it by accident already but no um, all right Okay, unhinge this part, and now we have a seat. This is the seat, so I guess the feet don't form the seat. And we're going to transform the feet. I don't know if they lock together. I'm going to bring them forward, and there is a peg right here and a port right here on his foot. And you peg that in. Get that locked in. Come over here. Repeat the beat on his feet. And this is our basic motorcycle. Oh, wait, I think I <laughs> kind of forgot the tire. I don't know what stage this goes in, but I just see what's going on. And all right. All right, there we go. And this is our motorcycle. I could maybe have it tabbed in a little bit better, maybe proportion a little bit better. But I believe this is it. Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> Easiest transformation of the year for me. Ha. Huh? Wow, and here he is. And it's not going to roll on my surface. And wait, he has some right here. He has kickstands. Boom. Boom. And you can get this guy to stand up like that. And I do believe he has weapon storage uh, right here in the back port. And you can put this right here. And, and again, it's that little windmill thing we had as children. Just... <sighs> Wee! <laughs> you can leave it like that or you can turn it upside down I don't know if it just pokes directly in now that's even more weird or it can become a second seat or it can become a helicopter my mama mask mask crusaders working overtime fighting crime <laughs> anyway wrong property I just want to show you real quick the figure does roll with the little studs on just not on my surface rolls just fine it's actually kind of annoying with the little studs on the tires but rolls just fine. It's not on the glass. It's nothing to grip onto. Now let's take a look at the motorcycle overall. You can see some silver paint on the engine. Could have been a little bit more metallic y for my taste. It looks pretty good. Molded in detail in the engine, molded in seat, 
which is pretty good. Saddlebags right there. I knew they were saddlebags, not gas tanks. A fuel tanks. I'm around to the back. He actually has some brake lights back there. Um, and then the gas tank is very nice. It has a gas cap right there. A little peg right there. I wonder if we get some more weapon storage out of that. I don't know. Maybe it worked better in robot mode. And he has some gauges right there at the front of the motorcycle, which is the back of his head. Nice translucent bluish green windshield. You can kind of see his head popping out. Did I mess up that transformation? I don't know. Mm. There's a little bit of a gap right here. I don't know if that's supposed to be there. I could have jacked that up. I'm going to have to take a look at the box to see if I messed that up or not. On oh, the molded and handlebars. We saw these in robot mode. I don't know if I got a good look at them. They go up, they go down. They go up, they go down. I don't know. Um, brakes in the clutch. Red Gar in his motorcycle alt mode looks pretty good. Man, if we had this thing in 1986, kids would have lost their mind. Speaking of 1986, here is 1986 Red Gar alongside our new studio series 1986 Red Gar. And you can see the similarities and differences. And of course, they will be very similar because this figure is meant to represent this figure and give us a better take on it. I don't know if the technology is just better now or they just weren't trying it. I know obviously the technology is better now, but I think they could have pulled this off back then. It was like, eh. <laughs> they got They tried to keep the diaclone feel and do something new at the same time. Like this guy, he still has the die cast and obviously has the chrome parts. I love the chrome parts. Wish they would stick to that, but uh, and a little bit of, like rubbery tire, like has a rubber tire right here because this thing has ball joints in here. We'll get to that in robot mode, but anyway, back to similarities. We got the saddlebags in the back, uh, the legs fold underneath for whatever reason. The feet do on both of these guys. Uh, the head area is the front of the motorcycle, and the arms and hands are holding on to the tire. This one is folded up. Looks a lot better. No spikes over here. The st spikes were in the movie, but no spikes on the toy. And so a lot of the early artwork for this guy was drawn with spikes. I guess they just either couldn't or didn't. Or they just wanted to roll on all surfaces because this thing rolls on my surface. Yeah, for whatever reason, he has a chrome headlight. Yeah, and you really couldn't get a second junkie on to rat this guy properly. I have to see if we get a second junkie on to rat this guy. And speaking of um, Second Junkie on, I was tempted to grab two of these guys, but um, after the whole scored sweep thing, they will probably make a couple of Junkie ons because it was a whole lot of those guys, and a lot of them had different looks to put on here and ride, so I'm not going to be one of those guys that run out and grab a second Red Gar and throw it on there. I'm going to wait this time. I learned my lesson. Compared to the other versions of Red Guard that I own, this thing looks fantastic. It looks good on its own, even without looking back at those other figures. But this looks fantastic. The only problem I got is this little gap right here. I'm hoping I don't have this right. Hopefully somebody will tell me. I'm like, oh, okay. But I I think I have it right because of this pin is, is blocking it. I don't see any other way to do it. So yeah, other other than that, I mean, this thing is phenomenal. This is what we should have got. This is what we deserved back in 1986. <laughs> I, I love my G1, but this thing is terrible. It's actually ter it's terrible in both modes. And speaking of both modes, let's get to it. You check in, but you don't check out. Jumping back into the robot modes, and man, look at this hot garbage here. The <laughs> only thing he got going for him is like the... The chrome in this mode. Like his face is stuffed in there under the hood. And my thing is, I'm not big on cartoon accuracy. I'm not one of those guys where uh, my Transformers has to look like the cartoon. That's kind of why I weaned off Masterpiece Collecting. Because uh, the cartoon thing is just pushed too hard. But when they make a toy for the movie and it doesn't look like the movie, then you're like, what the hell? This is by far a better red guard. Man, look. <laughs> Craziness going on here. All right, so now I want to give red guard the size up and the rundown. Here he is with Generation 1 Hot Rod, 1986 Studio Series Hot Rod, Masterpiece Hot Rod, 
Masters of the Universe Strider. Wait, what? And MP44 Optimus Prime. All right, final thoughts now. Instantly, this is one of my favorite 1986 movie figures. He is completely awesome, completely movie accurate. Um, not a lot of hollowing, not a lot of junk, not a lot of panels popping off. He does what he is absolutely supposed to do. And just like the movie, he has absolutely no faction symbols, which goes back to, um, I think it was Dream Ru I think it was Dream Wave that um kind of introduced that he's both half decepticon and half autobot but he's good or whatever which would explain the red eyes in the movie but um love this figure i absolutely recommend it this is a must-have from 1986 wave it's a long time coming to get uh, accurate red guard it's not a third party i know third parties have made everybody i'm not a third party guy but um we got it here it is this is a great figure thank you for watching another episode of george reviews the reviews where every toy has a story.